Welcome, everybody. Welcome to our 10th episode, crazy as it seems, of Black Dance Stories. I want you to look and appreciate all the beautiful Black faces that you see here today. Here is a note about why we are here. Our dance world was pummeled by COVID-19 and Black dance artists are finding ways to talk about life during this time. Our world was further turned upside down after the horrible events ensued nationally and globally, bringing attention yet again to the need for the Black Lives Matter movement. Black dance artists have not been quiet. Black dance artists have been doing the work. Black dance artists continue to make work. To stay involved, we hold these weekly impromptu discussions and tell stories, Black dance stories. This is one action and we promise all of you that we will do our best to stay involved. We are a community working together to support uphold, highlight, and celebrate Black creatives. Tonight is our 10th episode of what we hope will be many stories told in the artist's own voices. Thanks for joining us, and we hope you will embrace this series as we do. We hope you will spread the word and support each and every artist that you see here. And of course, please come back. Tonight, it's B.B. Miller and Kyle Abraham's turn. So exciting. Today, you'll get to meet our ever-growing BDS team. I'll introduce myself first. I am Charmaine Warren. I am a Jamaican. I am the, grand, the great granddaughter of Ida Boyd, granddaughter of Solomon Goldson and Ruby Chapman, and daughter of Theophilus Warren and my 94-year-old mother, Perlene Warren, who lives in Jamaica. I am a non-disabled Black woman. I live on the stolen land of the indigenous Lenape people, now known as Montclair, New Jersey, with my husband, Tony Turner, whom you will meet in just a second. Our daughter, Ashe Turner, a Black ballerina with locks, is going into her junior year at Boston Conservatory. I have locks that fall to my shoulders, and I'm wearing large teal earrings and a white blouse. Behind me are photos of our family, a large plant, a lamp, and African mask. Because my world is dance, I can't imagine anything else but to be with you here each week. I am so honored to share this platform with each of you and to be in this space with members of our indefatigable dance community. I turn it over now to Kimani. Hello, everyone. I'm so happy to be here with you. My name is Kimani, as Charmaine said. I'm coming to you from the village of Harlem on stolen Lenape land. I am a black, non-disabled woman, and I live with my nine-year-old son. I am sitting in my dining room. I have a golden mocha haircut, and I am wearing large silver hoop earrings and a blue crop top. I am the granddaughter of Lucille Madison. She died at 104. I teach because of her. Daughter of Ronald Augustus Fowlin, Jamaican warrior, and Anne Fowlin, Renaissance woman. I dance because of them. My son Tamayo keeps me present with the fascination of a blossoming young visual artist. And with that, I will turn it over to Nick. Thank you, Kimani. Hi, everyone. I'm Nick Hall. I am a Haitian American. I am a black, non-disabled man. I was born to born in Brooklyn to Sheila and Curtins Hall. My family, including my sisters Isabella and Victoria, now live in Montclair, which is on stolen Lenape land. I am also a recent graduate of the Fordham Ailey BFA program. I'm in a white room wearing a brown corduroy button down. With that, I'm going to pass this over to Tony Turner. Hi everyone. I'm Tony Turner, son of Wanza Turner and Joy P. Turner, maiden name Joy Williams, from Bermuda, and um, my father was from Detroit. I'm sitting in a yellow and red room with a purple top on, on stolen land 
from the Lenape people, uh, no doubt stained with the blood of my ancestors. I'm happy to be part of the uh, Black Dance Stories family. I do the graphics for them, and I'm going to hand it back to Nick. I'm going to pass things over to Cynthia. Thanks, Nick and Tony. Hi, my name is Cynthia Tate. I am so proud to be the publicist for Black Dance Stories. So proud. I am in Queens, New York on stolen Lenape land. I am a Black non-disabled woman. I am the daughter of Walter Tate and Greta Shaw Tate from New Orleans, Louisiana. I'm wearing a coral head wrap, a blue button-up shirt, gold hoop earrings, and gold framed glasses. Now I'm going to turn it over to Gabe. While Gabe is trying to connect, maybe Caitlin, you could come in. Stolen and Nape land. And um, if Gabe is here, I'm going to pass it to Gabe. If not, pass it right back to Kamani. He's trying to connect to audio. So until then, I'm going to let everyone know that we stand in a time that is uncertain and strange. And I want everyone to know that we stand in solidarity with those protesting for an end to racial violence and police killings of black men, women, and children. Nick. Um, last week I mentioned Hurricane Laura. We just wanted to send our love to those that are affected and hope that they're staying safe. Charmaine. Yes, thank you, Nick. Thank you, Kimani. Just a reminder, and we, we talk about this, the things that are happening in the world and how we will share that with you and just to lift everybody up. And we also stand in solidarity with those who are in the public eye and who have taken pause. So much is happening right now. We, start, we stand in solidarity with all those folks. If everyone, I'm gonna pass this on back to Kimani and if Gabe doesn't come back in right now, We'll introduce Gabe later on, but technology, yes. passing it back to Kim. Kimani. Thank you, Shami. Just to let everybody know, one thing really important that we all can do is please vote. Please, please, there's 60 days left. I will be counting down every time we're together. And another really important thing to please fill out the census and send it in because we need to be counted. So the other last thing that I wanna add for housekeeping here is, please donate. This is how our family is growing and that we can stay on and do these things for hopefully forever. So please, your donations mean so much to, to us and the artists. I will pass it back to Shawnee. Oh, and I'm gonna steal that pass and take oh. it from myself. <laughs> Just a few technical things. I wanna ask everyone to drop their name in the chat. A big part of Black Dance Source is the community. So we wanna see who's joining us for the night. So drop your name, send a hello. Uh, talk to your neighbor. Um, also, while you're there, please subscribe to our channel. That means a lot to us. We love to see who's coming to see us every week um, as well. Also, please follow our Instagram and follow our Facebook page. Um, a small side note, we're testing a new software tonight. So if there are any technical interruptions, we ask you to bear with us while we fix them. And my last housekeeping, um, if you would like to grab a cocktail, a glass of wine, and if your choice of drink is a glass of water, so be it. But with that, we're going to cheers to BDS. Cheers to BDS. Yay. Thank you all for being with us. So it's time to say goodbye to Cynthia and Tony and Kimani and Nick, because we're fixing to bring BB into the picture. Oh my gosh. Bye, Cynthia. Bye, Tony. See you in a few minutes, Kimani and Nick.
B.B. Miller. Hi, B.B. Hey, team. Cheers to you. Hi. I don't know if you can see me. Can you see me? I can absolutely see you. Okay, great. So, All right, so now, now a real cheers. Oh, now okay. This is a cup um, my sister just sent me for my birthday, which is coming up soon. And oh. it's copper and uh, filled with water right Lift now. Lift it a little higher. Lift it a little higher. Ah, ah, ah. Nice. I also have this. So, <laughs> cheers. Cheers. And um, thank you for this invitation. And I got to say, I'm so looking forward to chatting with you and for, with Kyle. And I just got to tell a Kyle story because when Kyle, when you took my workshop at um, Bait, the Bates Festival, 2009, maybe, I don't know. I was so moved. You took my repertory class and your, your grace, your quiet grace and your jump and landing silent and your way of, of taking in information and, um, and digesting it and moving with articulate, it, oh, just energy and uh, grace. I said that before, but was wonderful. And I wanted to know who you were. And so now I do. Um, okay, so um, uh, I am, I was born Beryl Adele Miller. My sister called me the BB and not the baby. She was a year and something older than me. So I've been BB since then. Um, I'm wearing a dress that I made myself out of fabric that my sister gave me. It's probably from Ghana, I'm not sure. These are earrings that she made. Anybody who's known me in the last 40 years maybe would recognize the last, the last earring that I uh, uh, have that uh, of a pair that Nina Wiener, um, a mentor and choreographer I worked with gave me. Uh, I am in um, our house, David, my husband, David Gray, and I live here uh, in Columbus, Ohio. Uh, our house was built in 1921, and this area was called Indianola Park at that time. And 100 years even before then, roughly, uh, it was the land belonging to the Wyandotte, Wyandot, Huron, Iroquois, Delaware, Mingos, Miami, and um, uh, other uh, First Nations tribes that were here. There are still burial, uh, burial mounds in the area, but not where we are because it's pretty flat. Um, I moved here when I was 50 years old. I'm going to talk really fast because I got to get to a lot of information. So there we go. Um, and my mother moved from Meridian, Mississippi when she was 20 years old, moved to New York. Um, she was there to be um, a domestic uh, for a doctor's family and um, she so impressed the family that they paid for her to go to nursing school at Harlem Hospital. So my mother was a nurse as I was growing up and then became an elementary school teacher. And um, she was, um, my father was from Barbados. He was born in 1896. Um, I'm not sure what, to what town. His father's name was Samuel Miller and my grandmother's name, I do not know. My father died uh, when, and I was 30 something. My mother died when I was 20 something. Um, and, but anyway, we, we grew up in the Red Hook Projects in Brooklyn, yeah, Brooklyn. And um, it was on the side that was nearest the BQE, but we could also see a lot of the docks. And my father, who when he had left Barbados as a teenager, came to the States and um, was in the Navy in World War I, stationed in Puylac, France. And so something about his naviness and the fact that we lived near docks seemed really important to me. Um, I first started dancing when I was about three or four. My mother found Henry Street Settlement House and um, the people that she'd been working for as a domestic, she was interested in how, in the kinds of things that they offered their children, music lessons, dance lessons, and 
so she thought we should have dance lessons. So we went to Henry Street. Um, by the way, my sister Ruth, we had a long talk yesterday and I got some details from her. So thank you, Ruthie. Um, anyway, so we went to Henry Street and matter of fact, a lot of mothers brought their kids to Henry Street and they were standing around in the dressing room while we were having our class. And then Henry Street decided that they were gonna have a mother's class too. So my mother was dancing. And my first teacher was Ruth Growart, who passed away just this past May at the age of 101. My next teacher was Murray Lewis, who was my teacher until I was about 12 years old. And from him, I, I really just kind of took in all this information about energy and form and, and spice and, and dynamic and, and being alive in movement. And I thought that's what everybody did. I thought that's what dance was for everyone. Um, uh, I, it's different for lots of people. But anyway, so I did that until I was about 12 and I gave up my piano lessons then, gave up my dance lessons, tried a little ballet that was really pretty horrible, good teaching, but horrible by connection with the community. Um, and then um, when I went, when I was in high school, oh yeah. I was thinking about like how, okay, one of the, going back to what I said about Kyle and, and how he danced and where he, how he does that. I love watching movement. I love watching the kinds of stories and information that people carry and all those details and ways of moving. Somehow around in high school, I realized that I was pretty good at moving. Um, we had a, a neighbor's friend named Marcus who would come over and we would do Latin dance and the hustle. And I picked it up really quick. And uh, I, then Ruth, my sister, introduced me to Gus Denny Zulu. Um, this was, I think I was in college then, I'm not quite sure, uh, where I learned um, West African dance, Ghanaian based, um, that was also details and a way of moving and another kind of community and relationship within the form. Um, and um, we would do these bembes, which were these um, kind of celebrations in some big hall in Queens. And uh, this, this community of, of drummers and dancers would dance and dance for hours, it seems, into some kind of a, of a trance, it felt. It was just wonderful. Um, skipping around a little bit. But I, I wanted to tell you all these kinds of things about movement that were really interesting to me. Um, at a certain point, I went to a college in uh, Indiana. My mother had passed away. No, she hadn't died yet. Nope, still there. Thank you, mom. Went to college, came back during college for an off-campus study trip to New York. And I picked up Balkan folk dancing. And it's all in 11s and 9s. And you are holding these women's in a whole women line of women's with shoulder to shoulder. There's a whole other kind of community and power and articulated steps and rhythm that I thought was fantastic and fascinating. So um, that's a lot, but going back, okay, yeah. Um, came back to New York. My mother was ill, she died. I went to grad school. I didn't know what else to do. While I was there, I got context. I got context about moving, moving and movement. The people that I came out of, including my family, including Murray um, at Henry Street, including Gus, and that all that information was in me in a way that it was not in anybody else. And so something about learning history, theory, yeah, 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 yeah. But I had a context, I had a history and I had a future that I was able to, and it was up to me to define how that looked and what I did with that. Um, I met Nina Wiener at the time um, and um, went back to New York. She had me in her company. We danced together for five, six years or so. Um, uh, Nina came out of the, the Tharp, the Twyla uh, thing. And so jazz shoes, very cool, very kind of slippery, um, very kind of 
sensual movement and a lot about how your pelvis is rioting up and down on this landscape. Um, and the detail of what you could do and how you would manage yourself and the technique of how you yourself move, not like technique, like there's some special place up there, but how did I move? How could I do this? So somehow in all of this, there are, oh, there's so many teachers, there's so many faces that come, come up. I wanna go back for a second because I'm, I'm thinking of Henry Street and when I was a kid, we were watching a quartet, Phyllis Lamhut, Gladys Balin, Murray, Nick, Murray, Murray Lewis, and um, Bill Frank, who was African-American black dancer, tall, like regal, long neck. And he was the first black dancer I think I, I, I saw. And he was in this group, a mixed group, but he was just, beautiful, they were all beautiful in their own way. So there was something about dance and the things that I followed because of my interest in it that, that kept leading me back to, how are they doing that? How are they doing that with other people? What are the details of their information and, the, and their language, um, their movement language? So somehow, ooh, that's a lot of history, wow, wow. You know, I don't think I've ever said all of that out in one like 11 minute like kind of pass before, but I'm, I'm, I'm just, um, I am just vibrating now, just thinking about all of these people who have helped me get to where I am. I danced with Nina six years. I had a, was working in a restaurant. Uh, there were some other dancers. I said, like, hey, you want to let's do a nah, make a piece? And I'm like, yeah, that's great. Um, made the one, the first piece, 19, I don't know, 81, maybe. And then there was a second piece. Who knew that you could do another piece and another? So somewhere around the third piece, and this was all um, at those first few pieces produced by Dance Theater Workshop and David White and a lot of other people too. Um, but I didn't know that there was more than one dance. I didn't know that what you did was then try to do it again until I started doing it again. And the people who, who stuck around or who came back or who showed up in, in, in well, actually no, after, before the auditions, the people who just stayed were the ones I said like, well, I guess we have a company and we go on from there. Um, I feel really lucky to have been in that kind of dance boom of the 1980s, which was already like uh, almost 40 years ago, but um, it felt boomy. It felt like I had um, a range of people that I could look at, Ralph, Ralph Lemon, Ishmael, Houston Jones, um, Susan Marshall, Susan Marshall, Susan Marshall, David Dorfman, um, lots of folks who were just kind of like, whoa, we got dance, we got companies, we can do all of this stuff. Um, but I felt it was like a group of my peers, Jowale, um, a group of my peers in, in action that was really the teacher. Um, a lot of you guys know that um, Ishmael started, did uh, Parallels in Black in about 82, 83. Um, I won't get all the names, but me, Fred Holland, Ishmael, Ralph, Blondell, Jowale, Gus Solomons, Harry Shepard III, um, uh, Christine Rada, Rada Christine Jones, um, that might be it, maybe, I don't know, um, about like, are we, as Ishmael put it, like these, this is a group who's not Ailey, coming from the Ailey tradition, and we're making work. Um, and so, it was like a way of having a community that I didn't know I needed and that we were all kind of facing in different directions, but I felt them at my back, sometimes at my front, but I felt them at my back. I also felt, you know, what was I in my thirties, early thirties is that kind of thing. It's like, I'm not paying attention to him, but I am paying attention. I'm not paying attention to that. I am paying attention. So just that, that kind of, um, in and out of personalities and, and, and being with people. But that sense that there was a community 
of dancers and makers with me, um, black dancers, also the white dancers and others who were in my, my company, I, I pay homage to all of those folks because I learned how they moved. I watched them a lot. Watching them a lot has gotten me where I am, wherever that might be, but I guess it's here. Um, so I watch, I watch, I still watch. And in this season of all things are different, I'm sewing sometimes. Um, I am walking with Wilson, our dog, and David, my husband. Uh, I'm cooking a lot, but I'm watching how we are together, how we have found a whole nother way of being in relationship at six feet apart. And so there's a whole other language behind the mask about how we, how we connect and how our eyes and faces are telling a story. Sorry. Um, yeah. Um, whoa, okay, I'm still there. I'm thinking of, um, um, oh, well, yeah, okay. Just something about being a choreographer, being a dancer and then being a choreographer and then being a director who watches the, the choreography and being an improviser um, that, um, I feel that the visual feel that we hold that is individual for each of us, the visual picture, the frame that we make around the world as it comes to us and how to um, imagine outside of the frame, how people got in there, what, how information gets in, how dynamic gets in and out is really the, um, the basis of what we can offer to the world. And the singularity of someone, of your, our, mine um, point of view feels tremendously important, particularly because we're not with each other. It's really important that even as we're looking at a flat screen, wherever we are, because we're all kind of doing it this way, that we know that I can see that, I can see that street sign right outside the window. I have my three dimensionality always within reach. And so, I don't know, I feel like I'm summing up and it's too early. I got two more minutes. Huh. No. You keep going. I know, I know, but I want, there's so much to say. I know. Um, um, um. You know what's interesting to me, this idea of our, uh, our weight in space. I'd love that we have like an, um, and it's not like we make an impression on the ground unless it's really soft ground, then we kind of sink a little bit. Mm -hmm. but we are all kind of above the ground mm -hmm. and connected, but it's like, it's, it carries us as we feel kind of the, all that magnetic energy going down, that we have a sense of our very, un, very unique uh, dispersal of our weight and attention is, is at the basis of how we move as a going to the supermarket, going to the grocery store and also going in a, in a studio. And, um, I love to think about all the, the questions that we can ask ourselves as movers of like, why did I do that? How did I do that? How did I do that more than why did I do that? How did I do that? What's occurring to me now? How did I get there? What's next? Okay, I think I'm good. I think I'm good. You think you're good? Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. That was really fast, man, oh man. You said you've, ne you've never been in a place where you can just for so long to just do that. Well, it's also, you know, that 20 minute kind of length. It's like, okay, whoa. And I, well, I talked to my sister yesterday and we're, you know, it's like, so how did, how did it pop up? My, my grandmother's name, uh, Minnie Hopkins, my grandfather, Marion Clark Jr. Um, there were all these stories about them that I wanted to like kind of 
oh, you know, get to before we forget, like my great great grandfather, mm. his father was um, um, his owner. <gasps> wow. My grandfather, Marion Clark, had blue eyes. <gasps> his father was born from his owner. And when his father was uh, probably a teenager, he came across his, his father, the owner, beating his mother. And the owner knew that um, uh, he, the owner would not necessarily be safe. So he sold my great, great grandfather. No, my great grandfather. And so we don't know what my, I know what my great grandfather, who was my grandfather's father, where he came from, but we don't know where my great, great grandmother would have been. Wow. It's astounding. Yeah, it's astounding. So, I think my mother was someone in this progression to moving to New York or just even growing up in Meridian, Mississippi, which um, uh, growing up in Meridian, Mississippi, um, somehow by the time she got to New York and she said, I want to know all these things. I want my children to have access to things that I didn't mm -hmm. have without necessarily saying, I want you guys to have access to what I didn't have. She just gave us access to what she didn't have. And we would go to hear um, classical music concerts at Town Hall. We heard, I can see this in my mind, Pablo Casals was, was uh, on, we were way up in the rafters, but he was on the stage <laughs> in one chair and one cello and he was playing and we heard it. And my mother made it her business to say that is Pablo Casals and you should know that. So this, just that kind of line of information and, and happenstance, I feel is remarkable for me mm. and something for me to just carry. So yesterday talking with your sister, whew, a lot came from that. A lot came from that. And we had been talking, I said like, you know what? I got a Zoom, we have to Zoom with Helen, our Aunt Helen, who's 101. Um, and, uh, and Cousin Boots and Cousin Pee Wee, because they know all of these stories. And I've heard them, you know, now and again in, in, in family reunions, but it's like, before that line is really faded, we need to kind of just anchor it. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, know I, I know I will, but... Um, mm -hmm. uh, you guys heard it now. You heard that much. Yeah. Yeah, I love the names. In Meridian, Mississippi, my cousin Pee Wee, uh, about, oh, couple of, no, maybe 10 years ago, we were, we were down there visiting, and we noticed that a street had been renamed James Cheney Drive. What? Said, oh, yeah, well, yeah, look at that. And she said, oh, yeah, James Cheney. We went to high school together. And the fact that it had not been mentioned before mm. that it was one of those things like yeah that happened that was bad that was bad but it hadn't been mentioned it was in the memory and it moved on and on the corner of James Cheney Boulevard there's a McDonald's and <laughs> there was a young white girl kind of walk, working behind, like, you know, well, we'll kind of help you and all that stuff. And <laughs> behind us, there was a, a tall, young, young black high school, you know, early high school uh, kid. And um, she said, like, oh, hi, you're the new guy. And they started just going back, like, yeah, yeah, I'm the new guy. He says, like, you know, if you're going to be in Mr. So-and-so's class, you know, do you think about this? Da, da, da. They were chatting in the new South in a way that was not my cousin Pee Wee South or my mother's mm. Meridian, Mississippi. And so just this idea of progression of in all directions, all kinds of ways, 
that brought them and they, you know, when, okay, they were born in, 19, in maybe 1997 or so and what the world would have looked like for them mm -hmm. at that point. Yeah. Yeah. So. Well, I don't know if this is a good transition point because we don't want to talk about age, but 70s, 80s. I don't know if Kyle was even born then, but let's bring let's bring Kyle in. <laughs> Maybe that was great. Cheers to bring Kyle in. I know you need a sip. Mm. Moving on to the wine here. Yes, yes, yes. Oh my gosh. So I have some shout outs as we bring Kyle in. Hi, Kyle. Yeah, I said a hip, a hop, a hip <laughs> Oh my gosh. Guess what, y'all? A gazillion people are here for you all. Georgiana Pickett, Eva Ya Asante Wa, <laughs> Laurier Pritchard, Elizabeth Zimmer, and Davidson. Stony Darling, Fantarati, who's just one of our interns. Joanna Ketsi is here. Sule Adams is here. Cynthia Oliver is here. Risa Steinberg, Kathy Eiler, Stephanie Tooman, Janice Brenner, AK Jones. Yo, Tunde is here. Joanne Robinson Hill. And Laura Marchese, who, when you were dropping all those names, said Blondell. Oh, right? Yeah. So this is your time. I'm going to leave you two, you and Kyle, to have a visit. Have oh, well, Bibi, thank you so much for those beautiful, kind words at the, the beginning um, of your storytelling. I really, really appreciate it. You know, all I true, all I true. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I just want to know where, you, you know, it's like, I knew that you were dancing with Dorfman and, and stuff, but I didn't, I, you just kind of came and you showed up in the class and you did an amazing piece in that, uh, you know, you were emerging artist slot for the, for the festival, which I don't know what, where, what happened to that, but where it went, but. Yeah, that was the beginning stages of the rate. Well, not beginning stages. That was a early preview of the radio show, which ah. ended up performing, um, well, premiered in Pittsburgh and then went on to um, Dance Space Project in New York and then toured around, which was really exciting. So, um, okay, was it 2009? And now we are like, yeah, what? It was 2000, yeah, it was 2009. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was a dream of mine to work with you. So I, I was really happy, like thrilled that I was able to get into that class. Um, yeah. <laughs> well, I, you know, and we have gone on and since, and but the fact that that was like eleven years ago is like makes me crazy. That's nuts. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah. what? So, what? 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 Where? Where are you? Where are? Where are you from? What? What? Tell me about. <laughs> or are you gonna tell me about yourself? Um, oh, no, I think I do that. I think I do that part later. I think okay. the thing I'm, I'm not sure if, if I ask you questions now, or if you ask me questions, or if we just talk, I can go any way. Okay. Like to, hello. So, let's talk. What are you doing? What am I doing? Um, like what's I, today? <laughs> so I was on vacation for the month of August. Where? Um, um, well, moving. I moved back to New York for a while. Um, I got an apartment. Um, in Fort Greene, um, also known as the Can Canarsie and Lenape land. So um, I'm here currently um, setting up shop. Um, yeah, until we know what's, what's what. But I'm also making space to kind of try and find ways to connect with my dancers a little bit closer to where they might be um, and mm -hmm. hopefully find some way or some space to um, create some, some new content. What street in Fort Greene? Fulton. Fulton and what? Well, you know, I can't be saying that up. <laughs> oh, okay, wait, sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah, um, no, I lived on Adelphi Street uh, for about okay. eight years, so. Yeah, yeah, um, I'm, near, I'm near BAM, like about, about a couple. Oh, uh, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. I tell you, okay, you were in LA, well, you spent time in LA, because you're yeah. teaching. Yeah, yeah, I still teach, still teach at UCLA. Um, love my job. <laughs> yeah. Mm hmm. I think it's it was inter it's interesting just going either going back and forth or just leaving New York, which I can talk about. But yeah. 
uh, of just um, uh, being in, I mean, I can, there's like, a, there's, there's space above me, there's another floor, and then there's an attic, and then there's a base, you know what I mean? It's like, I have access to vertical space, not only just a, a space around me, we have a garden out back. It's just, it's bizarre growing up in, in Brooklyn and having a garden now, um, but I'm, I'm liking it. I like to frown at my weed, my weeds, like, oh, you shouldn't be here. We, you know what I mean? Of just of like what it brings you. Like. Yeah, I think that's something I'm kind of trying to um, understand, or maybe I'm starting to really kind of be at peace with as someone from Pittsburgh, um, which is not New York and not LA or not Seattle, not, um, you know, any of the places that you've been. I think that like, there's something really, um, there's something that's really special about this kind of duality of these two places where New York, there's just a natural um, vitality here that you just feel even being as kind of alone as I can be. Um, but in LA, I definitely feel that loneliness, but in a, in a way that is somewhat comforting for me. Um, so there's something about both ends of the spectrum that I enjoy. And maybe it's from being in like the type of neighborhood that I'm uh, from in Pittsburgh, where like right at the bus stop, you could get shot by a gang member, but then you go down the hill and up the hill to where my house was. And it was just, sometimes there would be deer uh, in the backyard. <laughs> yeah, <it was> just <laughs> yeah, bizarre. I hope the deer didn't get shot. But no, not by not by the gangsters. No, they weren't checking for you. Yeah. yeah. Um, when you say that you want to get you know uh, close to the people that you're working with, um, do you think about working with them individually or like as a group or how is that going to work? Well, kind of all of the above. You know, um, before this COVID stuff got as insane as it did. We were um, on the trajectory of premiering a new work in June um, in Houston um, with Meg Booth. Um, we were going to premiere this work, an Untitled Love. It's all focused on um, love, kind of honoring my my parents, my aunts, my uncles, everyone that helped raise me. Um, all centered around D'Angelo's catalog, um, mm -hmm. and then COVID happened. Um, so we're just trying to kind of pick up the pieces of that. Um, I was teaching up until mid-March in LA. So I was working my way back to New York to yeah. kind of put the final touches on that work and kind of get to that place where we can make new risks um, and kind of up the ante of um, the ways in which we trust one another in our collaboration. Mm -hmm. um, so there's that. How do you do that? Um, honestly, I think something that I've learned, ironically, in some of the kind of retrospective work that I've been doing during COVID is that it's a daily process. I can't just walk into rehearsal assuming that everyone will trust me every day. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I'm trying to be aware of that and trying to um, make sure that whenever I'm entering this space or entering um, even this kind of virtual landscape that um, I speak from a way that um, opens up for some vulnerability within me. Um, and I make the space to look that much deeper into um, the eyes and the kind of energy of, of my collaborators. Mm. Mm -hmm. But hoping that I'm not misreading the energy. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. But, yeah, a, but, but I mean, well, I, you, okay, you know what? We are really good about reading each other. We are really, really good at it. We're also good at performing that we are good at it. Right. <laughs> and yeah, so I maybe there's sure. something about yeah. like what, <laughs> what you are demonstrating about yourself. You really are yourself. And you know, like how that, how that kind of circles through whatever group we're, we're, we get to work with. I, I mean, I think that that's, that's pretty fascinating of like, we know, we know truth. It's just like, and it takes time to unlock it. I'm not, this isn't like how to do it or anything. I'm just like kind of musing on, on, this, on yeah. this thing. Because that's all, all we have is really trying to figure out a way that people can, can trust each other and then do something with it that might be intrusive. Right. Because there's something, I don't know, as a choreographer, I feel like a lot of times what I do is I like to interrupt a flow, that thing that they love to do, you like, wait, I don't do it quite so much. You know what I mean? Of just that, that redirecting is like such a great choreographic tool, but at the same time, is that 
listening and dealing, you know, open to whatever truth is in the room. Mm. Yeah, I feel like part of maybe part of that is just like trying to get to that space where people aren't saying what they think you want to hear. Mm-hmm. Because ultimately, all I want to hear is the truth. <laughs> you yeah. know, like, yeah. kind of like just yeah. cut through it so that we know how we can best um, just connect um, in any any capacity. And I think something that I really loved about the process working with you at Bates, and separate from you know um, you coming and, and working with AIM. Um, when you were staging and or restaging Habits of Attraction was the um, space for just communication. So that mm-hmm. like, yes, we are making a dance, but we're also talking about making a dance and no, and really honest with um, the kind of malleability of what words can do to um, shape the work or get it to something um, much, much fuller than mm-hmm. steps of the quotes on it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Guess who's here? Who that? Me that. When the, the y'all are just getting into, mm, I hate mm. this part when I interrupt you. <laughs> y'all were just getting we'll, more juicy. We'll not juicy. It's okay. Yeah. We're good. You're good. I can yeah. call them up. I know. Yeah. You. <laughs> I have good. questions for you on the next the next chapter, BB. Yeah, so. okay. yeah. See, Nikki Castro is here. Wendy Perrin is here. Ah. Laura Greer is here. Monique Martin is here. And Sydney Liggett and Valerie Roshan, but Kyle, I have something for you. And Bibi, I have something for you. Kyle, Jasmine Hearn say, is here. And Jasmine says, come through, Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh. <laughs> <laughs> and Bibi, Ruth is here. Your sister. She made these. She made these. That's my sister, Ruthie. <laughs> yeah. All right, Bibi. Okay. We love you. Hang out, we'll be back. Okay, thanks. All right, Kyle. Cheers and welcome, baby, baby, baby. I'm so glad to see you. Very mutual. Aw, introduce yourself and then have at it. Sure, hey everybody, Uh, Kyle Abraham. I am the son of Samuel Gregory Abraham and Henrietta Jacqueline Abraham. Um, maiden name Clifford. Um, I am currently, as I said, on Canarsie, um, Lenape land, um, born and raised in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Um, I wear it on my sleeve, although I have a lot of tattoos, but not a Pittsburgh tattoo, uh, yet. It's probably, <laughs> probably coming. Um, what can I say? I started, um, before I got into, to dance, a lot of my life has been a lot of really, um, great support and, uh, recommendations. Um, so early on, just kind of being exposed to music by parents who uh, were both educators um, and wanted to make the space to acknowledge the importance of art in um, someone's education and their children's educa- education. So my sister and I were exposed to music, visual art, um, dance. Um, but for me, dance came later. Uh, first it was visual art and then um, a lot of different music instruments, the piano, French horn, violin, cello, um, voice stuff. Um, uh, with dance, ironically, the first dance thing was maybe not so good because I got kicked out of Catholic school on the first day for dancing. <laughs> they gave me some, my mom got me some penny loafers to start Catholic school. You know, I just, I just knew I had to step. Uh, but they're like, yeah, this kid, he can't focus. Um, so that was the end of that. Ironically, one would think maybe I would go into dance from there, but instead I went into karate. I started uh, practicing, studying karate. My dad took me to the, the YMCA in Pittsburgh, um, in East Liberty. Pittsburgh folks know where that is. Um, yeah, I found my way to dance after going to see the Joffrey Ballet perform um, billboards, which was performed by uh, all Prince's music. And anyone that knows me knows I am a true Prince fan through and through. Um, have every album, every maxi single, every CD single, box set, some of the bootlegs on vinyl and cassette and CD. Um, so yeah, that's what kind of got me going. And I was a big rave kid. And some of my rave friends in Pittsburgh, um, they took me to that show. I went over to their house. We usually would um, just hang out really late night and just dance to like drum and bass music at night. Um, but after that show, I think they just saw how excited I was. 
And so my good friend, Greta Polo, took me to a dance class and got me to audition for our high school musical. I had long hair at the time. It doesn't really grow that much now. <laughs> now it's, it's only, it's growing here, instead of here. Um, but it was, we were doing um, Once on This Island. So they're like, oh my God, you'd be perfect in that show. You have long hair, it's Caribbean musical. <laughs> um, and they cast me as a dancer. I was the only guy other than the lead who danced in that show. Um, but kind of staying with that kind of recommendation and suggestion, um, the, the teachers at Shenley High School, which is where I went to high school, um, Shenley High School, for people who want some fun Pittsburgh history, um, it's where Andy Warhol went to high school. Um, a lot of really awesome jazz musicians have also attended that high school. Um, it's also, if you see the movie, um, Me, Earl, and the Dying Girl, that is filmed in my high school. Um, afterwards, now it's like apartments, which is really sad, especially knowing how much history there was in that school. Um, but the teachers at that high school gave me a scholarship to take class the summer going into my senior year of high school, so I'd be better for the musical that next year. Um, and I went to the Civic Light Opera Academy in Pittsburgh um, that summer. And those teachers, uh, Buddy Thompson and Leslie Anderson Braswell, they um, were just super supportive and told me that I should go to the Performing Arts High School. So I went to that high school half day, which is called Kappa, Creative and Performing Arts High School, which was in Homewood, um, where Shenley was in the Hill District. And again, fun Pittsburgh um, history that those are neighborhoods associated with people like Art Blakey and Billy Strayhorn. Um, and if you know the Crawford Grill, that was in the Hill District. Um, so yeah, I did that for a year and all the teachers at that high school, they were just so supportive and they would show us work by Ulysses Dove. We watched the Two by Dove special um, that was on PBS. We watched, um, uh, we had Phil Adenko come into our high school and do a lecture demonstration. I got to see the work of Bill T. Jones, Arnie Zane Dance Company. They came in and did a lecture demonstration. I mean, how do we get a lectum from Bill T. Jones? This is in, when Still Here was, was being performed. So that was the first piece of Bill's that I saw performed. Um, yeah, so that was a big part of that time. The, the, my, the, the teachers were just trying to expose me to as much as they could. They would show me dances by Garth Fagan and they'd say, Kyle, this is where you should be. Like, you move like this guy. Um, and so they wanted me to go to SUNY Brockport at that time, I think it was. Um, but what ended up happening is everyone in my family, my mother, my father, and my sister had all gone to historically black colleges. So they really wanted that to be part of my journey as well. So we had an agreement that if I could find a program that had a good dance program, I would go in that route. So I went to Morgan State in Baltimore for a year, uh, only to find out that they did not have a dance program at that time. Maybe they do now. They had a dance club. <laughs> um, but, um, you know, the beautiful thing about that dance club is that I met um, one of my closest friends in the entire world, um, fellow choreographer, uh, Darrell Grand Moultrie. And Darrell introduced me to so many people who are some of the most prominent names in dance today, one of them being my sister from another mister, Camille A. Brown. Um, I met her at the Olympic Flame Diner uh, the summer that we were uh, studying at the Ailey School in the summer of 1996. I also met Will Rawls that summer, dear, dear friend and probably lifelong crush. <laughs> and um, who else? I met Olivia, um, Jackson, who danced for the Ailey Company, um, uh, Abdur Rahim Jackson as well, Asha Thomas, um, all these amazing folks were all there that summer. William Isaacs, we're all there studying and just kind of working on our craft in a really exciting way. Um, from there, I transferred to Purchase. Um, part of the reason why I went to Purchase was A, because Darrell told me I'd be crazy if I didn't, um, and B, so many dancers from Bill T's company had gone there. And something that's really smart that Purchase does, or they did at that time, is they would um, have a list of where their alumni went to, uh, where they went on to dance. And I got that and I was like, oh my God, this is amazing. And I used to study that list. There are names on there. I remember meeting Alan Good for the first time and I, was, I knew the name from the sheet, uh, or Alan Barnes, like all these different names you just know from these sheets. Um, so that, that's part of that excitement and joy. Um, I think because I started dance when I did at age like 17, I didn't really think I would be a dancer, even though I was dancing in my room, um, like most people. Um, but there was something about that that made me think about choreography. And when I look back to like 
being in the seventh grade and going to Calvary camp, a church camp in Ashtabula County, Ohio, I was making dances to Velvet DeVoe's Poison and doing skits to um, my version of Men on Film from Living Color, which is probably not the best thing to do at a church camp that is probably only 0.3% black or other, you know what I'm saying? Um, ironically, they thought all of the black folks, there were, I think, one summer, the, the most we ever had, because I went there for many summers, there were five of us all there one summer. They brought us into chapel because they thought we were forming a gang. A gang. One of those people in that, in that supposed gang is someone who, um, every summer we'd laugh, he's one of my closest friends, he got into a major accident every summer at camp, broke se several bones, got struck by lightning twice, Clearly not someone you would be thinking would be involved in gang activity. Um, but all that, yeah, I just kept making dances throughout my time at Purchase um, with the trajectory that I would continue on with dance. Um, but around the time I was finishing up at Purchase, I was thinking about music all the more and kind of making a return to my love of music. You know, this is the late, this was the late 90s. So by this time you have like trip hop and drum and bass music really being big, thinking about Bristol, England. So artists like Ronnie Size, Portishead, and Tricky. And I just thought I'd, I'd study music composition. Um, but before I booked that flight to London, or to Bristol rather, one of Bill Teeth's dancers got injured, Miguel Anaya. And I got um, an email asking me to come in and audition. Um, so there's a long story there that I don't know if we're gonna have time for, but in the Cliff Notes version, I can say that I winded up dancing very briefly for Bill's company um, before quitting dancing for a couple of years. Um, and during that break from dance, I moved back to Pittsburgh to spend some time with my family. My father was diagnosed with um, an early uh, onset of uh, Alzheimer's um, that, that year. Um, I mean, just one little fun, fun fact about the Bill story is um, I got fired from Bill the day that I signed my lease on my apartment in New York. <laughs> Um, but the beautiful thing there is that when I, I tell people this all the time, when he, when he fired me, I actually, the one thing that made me happy is that I felt like I could go up to him and tell him how much I loved him and how much he meant to me. Because if I did that, when I was dancing for him, it just looked like I was kissing up to the man. Um, but afterwards I was like, you know, you're the bee's knees. <laughs> you know, like, I think I, I just thanked him for everything that he's done for me. I mean, I read La Last Night on Earth multiple times. Um, I have every, probably anything that that man's name is on, but that's a book I have signed from some point in my life. Um, so that was really telling and really important to me, but it really made me think about what my relationship to dance could be and should be, especially in that time. So moving back to Pittsburgh, um, not that long after, spending time with my family. Um, I worked at the Andy Warhol Museum um, as an artist educator, um, not really thinking about choreographing as much, but thinking about how I can connect people to Warhol's work in new ways. Um, I did so by thinking about activities that were related to maybe a writing exercise um, or thinking about gesture, uh, trying to kind of draw this parallel between repetition in movement and repetition in uh, Warhol silk screened images um, or the kind of supposed imperfections in some of his work to help people think about the humanity that may exist in that work. Um, those were things that were fun to me, doing um, you know, his oxidation paintings, doing um, an acids and bases test, and then have people do a watercolor um, interpretation of what that is to get people thinking about um, science and how that can connect to the visual art. So all those things were really exciting. And I found my way back to dance, um, trying to skip aspects of that story because that's probably a long one. Uh, but part of that wound up uh, me thinking about going to NYU for grad school. Um, because having been fired the day that I signed my lease, um, that New York time was really tricky. I didn't really know what my relationship to dance was going to be at that time and what my relationship to New York could be. Because as we all know, New York poor is very different when you, New York with a paycheck. I'm not even going to say New York rich, but I'm going to say New York with a paycheck. They're different beasts. Um, so that was really telling. And so I wanted to think about a safe space and grad school for me was a bit of that safe space. Um, and after that, I think I really decided to continue to, to kind of 
focus that much more on um, choreography. And I started the company while I was in grad school, working with dancers um, that I was with um, in the, either in the MFA program or some of the BFA students, but also reaching back to um, my purchase family, um, dancing with people that um, I studied with and people that were dancing with one of my idols, Kevin Wynn. Um, anyone who knows my work um, hopefully sees some of that lineage. I hope it, it shows because um, I am a huge um, fan of, of what, what he does. I feel like in some ways he's like, a, a, like where Prince is to music, Kevin for me is to choreography. Um, so um, yeah, I would reach out to, to some of the dancers that I got to work with when dancing very briefly with, for Kevin. Um, Amber Parker, someone um, who a lot of people may recognize from her work with me in the radio show. That's how we met. That's also how I met um, choreographer Sidra Bell. We didn't work together in that capacity, but um, she's someone who I consider to be a wonderful friend and um, a dance sister. Um, so hopefully that tells a good amount of the story. I wasn't watching the clock, but I was trying to talk fast. Hopefully not too fast for the interpreters because I know I'm a fast chatty Kathy. <laughs> but they say never fast, never too fast. Oh, okay. And you still have some time. So, oh, yeah. mm. okay. Is there any aspect of these things or other things that you'd like me to dive in? To I, want, I want you to talk a little bit more about Pookie. Oh, inventing Pookie Jenkins? Um, <laughs> sure, yeah. So that's a, ironically, that's a good timeline because um, I started working on inventing Pookie Jenkins um, really around maybe the last week or two of, of grad school. Um, I, my good friend, Emily Beatty, another dance uh, person, she's based out um, in the Boston area, Boston, Cambridge area, outskirts. Um, she sent me that tutu for my birthday and just was like, I thought you could use this. And I thought ironically about my time in LA, I'm mean, not in LA, in London, because that was when, um, oh yeah, I skipped that chapter from this story, but I lived in London um, for uh, about a year, um, working at, for Diesel Jeans and recording music. I was trying to be a singer at that time. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Different life. I thought maybe I joined a boy band. Nobody can ever tell how old I am, except for now, because the grades are coming in. Um, but I was like, yeah, I'm gonna live a different life. Um, but while I was there, that was when um, Dizzy Rascal was um, being nominated for a Mercury Prize. Dizzy Rascal, The Darkness, um, Radiohead, all these artists that I really loved. Um, and so I thought about Dizzy Rascal's song, Respect Me, um, and uh, it was relation to that choo-choo. And so I started thinking about my high school years again um, and thinking about the kind of mask that I had to feel that I had to put on at times, especially taking public transport in Pittsburgh. Um, Cause like I said, when I got off the bus, it was right where the gang members were. Um, and Pittsburgh is all hills. So I got off the bus, had to walk down the hill and up the hill. And if I was taking a school bus, the bus would drop me off like three hills away from where I actually lived. And there's actually a time where a neighbor of mine that lived on my circle had to grab me, like stop his car, grab me and janked me in his car because I was being chased by a group of Crips. Um, it's very real, very real. Um, my, my neighborhood, which also is where um, Billy, Billy Porter is from, he, we're from the same um, area in Pittsburgh, Lincoln Larmer. Um, yeah, it's a, it was a really kind of complicated time. We had a curfew, all that stuff um, at that time. So a lot of that is what kind of made me think about Pookie, the kind of um, needing to change the tempo of my walk um, to kind of just try to go unnoticed um, or changing my quick response that I may have to someone that asks me a question um, in, in a class or walking in the hallway in high school. Um, and that also went on to be, you know, if you think about Pookie Jenkins, that kind of went on to be what Live the Realist MC was. Um, in some ways, it's, these works are, one is a solo version, the other is a group version. And, you know, there was one year in Seattle where I was um, asked to do a solo version of Live the Realist MC. So there's like a 45 minute version of me just doing that show. And then uh, the full company version. Um, which is really exciting um, to think about and think about like all the kind of iterations that all these works have had. Um, the radio show being one of them, um, as BB had mentioned before. Um, and it's, it's great to kind of think about all the different collaborators I've got to work with throughout that process. Um, and people that have seen um, Live the Realist MC, um, thinking about Pookie Jenkins and going to this next place 
and thinking about collaboration, one of my collaborators, Carrie Schneider, who I work with a lot, she does a lot of um, photography for the company and a lot of video work. Carrie had sent me a photo of a young boy in Chicago, um, which is where she was working at the time. And that, that photo made me think about my childhood in a way, which then made me think about the text that I wrote for um, uh, Live Through OSMC. I just took you on a little ride, huh? Hey. <laughs> hey. I did not know that that's where the, the tutu came from. Yeah, came in a priority shipping box. Support the mail, y'all. Just saying. <laughs> support the mail. <laughs> you can make a dance. <laughs> you can make a dance and support the mail. Where, where is that living now? In storage. In storage, one of my uh, one of my senior company members, Jay Neal, did a really really beautiful um, performance of Pookie Jenkins at our gala, our homecoming uh, that we call it um, this last fall. It was really really beautiful to watch them kind of live in that um, live in that role in a really really exciting way. Jay has done Pookie. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, Jay, Jay, he, they, when they did it, I, I was like really emotional because they did such a really beautiful job. I felt, I, I told them it was kind of like, um, like at the BET honors when someone's like, you know, singing your song and you just like get all verklempt. It, it was, it was, it was definitely like that. And, and um, yeah, Jay, Jay's a, you know, they're, they're such a really beautiful um, talent. So it was great to see them um, live in that and kind of own it in a way um, mm -hmm. and give it new life, kind of give it, give it like a nice space lift. Maybe in the last few minutes before BB comes back, you can shout out the dancers, maybe? Since oh, they said cool. Jay, add the rest of them. I don't know if I can do that today because we got some new hires. <laughs> okay, not today. Yeah, because I don't not know what we can announce. You know, I don't know what we, what we can announce or we can't announce. Um, yeah, but I mean, yeah, they're, they're, they're all wonderful and amazing. Current, past, I don't even know how many I can get through. Um, I mean, I know them, of course, I know every single name. But um, I don't know if I'd get to all the current. Don't, don't. That's yeah. all right. But I have to say that it would be nice to see that 45 minute version of Pookie. You know what? Honestly, nobody needs to see it. <laughs> <laughs> Why? I think people saw the, 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 the better parts people, people have seen. Um, yeah. You know, I was really lucky to um, perform in one of um, Gus's uh, programs, Gus Holloman Jr.'s programs at Dance Space Project. Um, back in, uh, would that be, I think it was maybe like 2011 um, with Paradigm. And it was me doing a solo. Um, it was part of, actually, ironically, we connected because of Harlem Stage during the Legends and Legacy program. Uh, we did um, a duet together. And part of that duet was me dancing to a Chopin song. So separate from that and or connected to that, Gus asked me to kind of be a guest artist in one of his programs um, to be followed by the wonderful Carmen de Lavalade. And so I did um, this Bill Evans solo that wound up being in Live the Real SMC. Um, Carmen takes off a, a bangle, left it on the floor. I put the bangle on and then danced to um, Bill Evans' Peace Peace. Oh my gosh, it's almost time to bring BB in, but since you mentioned Harlem Stage, we should big up Bradley Armand. Hey, who right, right? We curated e-moves so long ago together. And Monique yeah. Martin is there making it making it rock. But yeah. e-moves, Harlem Stage, right? Remember those days, Kyle? Yeah, I mean, I, I not only do I do I still remember them, I, I try and honor them however I can. I think the things people people to know is you know, there's so much to someone's trajectory. Um, you know, if it wasn't for Harlem Stage, they used to have, um, hopefully they still do, but they would have these info sessions. That's how I found out about Jerome Foundation, Travel and Study Grant. Mm. Um, and I got that grant because I went to that, that st uh, session and learned about preparing a grant um, in that capacity. Um, and having, taking that opportunity to go abroad, I went to, to Berlin, and I went to London on that trip. Um, I went and saw like some amazing work, saw some um, Sasha Waltz work. Um, got to see um, this other way of looking at dance theater. Um, you know, I, I have 
have someone who, not even if Phoebe was on this line, I think people, if you read the recent um, USA Today uh, piece that I did, I'm mentioning yes. Phoebe, mentioning Ralph Lemon, um, initially Houston Jones. Um, these are folks who, me, um, have made such a contribution to our field and to um, kind of showing us these different points of entry into dance making, okay. into a way that shows um, the kind of um, uh, wealth of range of, of black artists and or our art form in general. So um, not only being exposed to their work, but then having this opportunity to go to Europe and see kind of the differences in the way that we approach dance theater was really, really exciting. Oh my gosh. Okay, Th that was a great segue, Kyle. Thank you hey. for, bring <laughs> for bringing BB back in. BB, come on back, Kyle. That was so beautiful. BB, that was so beautiful. A gazillion people are here. Nia Love. And Joe Malillo is here too. Oh no! Oh, yeah. yeah. And Halifu Osamari is here. And Zayn Booker, cheers you too. You're so fabulous. Cheers. Oh my gosh! Oh. Oh, my water cheers. <laughs> water yeah. cheers. Cheers. Um, and you know, um, you were mentioning like all you know names of people and the dancers and um, Nikki Castro, Nikki Castro, Nikki Castro, and of 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 just. It's 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 dancers, it's writers, it's it's stage people, it's production, it's like just you know Joe Malillo, you you know producers. Um, I don't know if this happened to you, but there was a certain point where, you know, early on where I felt like I couldn't I couldn't say anything, I couldn't I couldn't be like actually talk to to be you know like you know you go to APAP and you're like hi how are you doing you know you just you're not I wasn't. I didn't know how to handle myself. I didn't know how to like, just say like, I am a person and I got thoughts and I got, oh, you know, and, and I'm kind of funny too sometimes. So it's, but, but then we all move through the field at the same rate. We're all kind of aging through the field at the same rate. And then it takes a while to realize like, oh my goodness, these are, these are my peeps in all ranges of, of, um, of jobs that they have to do to support what we all do in dance. And um, I'm, you know, forever grateful, forever grateful. Um, so here are statements, questions, and I'm gonna sift through them, but y'all keep chatting. But speaking of these are my peeps, Eva Ya said, Bibi, we have Bayesian connections. Oh, oh, did you even know that? No, I did not. And I've only been once, and when I was in 2012, and uh, so we're thinking about doing another trip because we found out, in, you know, looking up information about my father and all that stuff. But gotta go, yeah. And and somebody said thank you for sharing your dance lineage. Pa Patricia Go Cohen said that, mm -hmm. and I'm trying to sift through that, but y'all talk about stuff. Okay. Well, one thing, I mean, I have a lot of questions for you, Bibi, but just, just based on this idea of like just honoring the dancers, you know, there was something so beautiful of watching your cast of uh, Necessary Beauty um, when I saw it at Bake. Um, it just seemed like such this like beautiful family vibe. You know, uh, Angie had little baby Ruby there. Oh, no wait. Uh, Who's now 12? Yeah. Oh my gosh. I mean, well, you know, I'm only, I'm only 21, so, you know, <laughs> but yeah, just, just seeing, seeing the way, you know, I, I find it sometimes very cliche, this idea of like dance family kind of thing. Cause it's like, well, nobody's, you know, who am I hanging out with on the holidays? Maybe I am, maybe I'm not, I don't know, but there is something about your group. Um, yes, I definitely love, you know, separate, but it, there's something about your group that had this whole other sense of, um, yeah, it was a special type of family. I don't know if you want to talk about um, this this kind of like um, lineage and casting and trust, right? Because when you think about like um, Daryl and Angie in your work over time. Angie um, Hauser, Daryl Jones, right. Yeah. We're gonna drop something else in there because you asked that Kyle, because Cynthia also said to please talk about watching, watching. I don't know if that references that at all. Oh, oh okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, wow. Please Cynthia talk about what that, Kyle that. asked you. Yeah. But I, I think, um, well, okay, Angie and Daryl from 1996, Angie from 2000 or, or, or so, 99, 1999. Um, the, the, the humbling pleasure of working with people for 20 years is cannot be understated. So all old young folk, keep at it until you got your 20 years. Cause it's, it's just, you, 
we are, um, I, I, I know their touch and I know their weight against me and I know their weight in reading each other skin to skin. Um, uh, dancing with, with Cynthia, um, we had, we had a duet and I gotta say that she, I, I would watch her cause she got the, the steps kind of clearer than I did, which is, which is funny. <laughs> But um, get it out there, baby. Yeah, okay. <laughs> but I, I think. Well, let me go to watching, watching because that that was like a whole. Even the term watching, watching, just as a director, maybe you feel this like it's how, how much time you go. It's like, what are they doing? How would they do that? Like, blah, 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 blah. you get to just kind of see and imagine. Uh, we set up this. Um, Talvin and I, Talvin Wilkes, dramaturg. Yay, Talvin. Talvin. Yay. Another 20 years. Um, yes. Yeah. We were standing in, in, in the back of the rehearsal chat and thinking about stuff. And some of the dancers were in front of the TV looking at video, like, how do you get the thing? And, so, and there's this amazing kind of unselfconsciousness and in unison as they were all trying to figure out together what this thing was. And that, and Talvin and I were like, you know, watching this process and we were behind the TV. So we could see them looking into the TV and their heads would move together. So kind of finding these opportunities where we can, that truth that you're talking about, that is one of the dancer truths that we have, we're, you know, in rehearsal of just like you were, they're so intent on like getting all this detail, but it's also, it's a gift if you are, in the the zone of being able to watch watch for that watch for what it is that they are doing and i think that there's um well ugh, I, it, it's it's a gift of 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 reading reading return from the earth into into jumping or into somebody else's touch that i feel is my language and you, you know it's what I do it for. Yeah, I feel like, you know, you'd mentioned the word disruptive before. But, yeah, but, yeah, yeah. But there's also this delicacy, right? There's like this delicate nature. There's like this really beautiful softness and kind of care, but then it's yeah. like, uh, you yeah. Know. <laughs> well, you want to take care. You want, I mean, you want to take care of the room, everybody in the room so that we can all kind of, you know, disrupt together that yeah. there's a, I, I do believe that that the world would be a better place if, if more people kind of just did some contemporary dance and did some touching and you know kind of moving together because there is there is a delicacy in our humanity if we look for that on a physical level and I I, I trust in that and I really believe in that. Um, here's one that I. Here's another, Caroline Chauvinis. I hope I'm saying the name correctly. And I think this is maybe both of you. My voice just went up. Did you ever feel like you had to prove yourself to others who had danced for much longer their whole lives because you started dancing later? Hmm. I don't know if it's anything about dancing more than, uh, I don't know if it's even proving, I think feeling, um, I don't know, inadequate or something. I think like when I received the MacArthur, I didn't feel like I deserved it. I, I think I thought about all the people who work that I looked up to and still look up to that hadn't received um, that award. And I just was like, I don't know why they're honoring me um, instead of those folks. And so there were definitely years of the making um, after that where I, didn't feel worthy and didn't have the confidence that I needed as a dance maker to make um, my most honest work. I think there's maybe a dance or two in there that I like, but <laughs> overall, um, yeah. there are definitely several, several, I mean, several, whatever, whatever that means. Um, but there are definitely a few years in there um, where I was definitely grappling with people's either expectations or my um, concerns around what it, might look like for me to receive that award when I did. Hmm. I don't know how we not how we don't grapple with, um, you know, am I am I am I worthy or, you know, the other people's considerations. 
I'm not that person. Um, I don't, I always felt like I didn't quite have the ambition that people expected of me um, as a choreographer and, and director. My, my ambition was really to be in the studio more than just to get my work out and out and out and out and out. So the making of it was where I really put my time and it is, it is most of the time that we spend in this. Um, so I, I feel, you know, just growing up in, in Brooklyn in 1950 odd, odd 1950 um, of, of just the, the visibility and invisibility, the hiding and also the, the clear view we had of, of people I had as a, you know, a young black girl of people who didn't see me of just like, you know, you kind of just, you know, you get used to that, to that duck or you're tipping of your head sideways. And, but there's also, it's, it's like, I didn't feel inadequate. I just felt that there was, there was, um, that this was real too. <laughs> you know, it's all real and we're learning from it all. So, um, and I think, and Joe Melillo, thank you so much for, for the, the next wave in 1989, where again, it was sort of like what you were saying, Kyle, about not like, am I, am I really, what can I do with this? And I felt, I made two pieces, Rain, which I love, which of course took like two and a half weeks to make. Cause it was like, whoa, got a time for a solo, go. And <laughs> then um, Allies, which is a lovely piece but I was, I just felt like so precious about like, oh, I don't know, I don't know, you know, is it the right thing? I don't know. You know, all the costumers and who began music? Okay, Fred Frith, okay. Yeah. You know, just all of that panic around how is this perceived versus this is what this is and it's gonna come out and it, and it came. So, so curious about like how to, um, how to deal with that level of life in and around your work one's work and so anybody who wants to talk about that like in a in a you know support group mentor group whatever I'm, I love that kind of conversation because we are figuring out how to live with what it is that we must do and sometimes the must of it of it is clouded by all the other things that we have to do so I think that's kind of what got me back to dance though it's like you know I said I moved to London to try and do music stuff but the, there was something about singing that like especially given the time that was like when American Idol was like first starting out, where like, even if you're watching a show in tone deaf, you're gonna say someone sharp or flat. But with dance, there was something that seemed um, really grounding in the sense that a lot of people just say, I don't know what, I don't know what this is. I, I can't really judge it. I can't comment because I don't know what this is. There's something about that, like, I don't want to say safe in the way that like makes it simple, but there's something that gave me a sense of power um, with, if my foot is sickled, maybe I did that on purpose, maybe I didn't, but whatever the reason, it's, I'm gonna own it. Um, you know, ironically, you know, you think musically about someone like Michelle Farrell, who will take certain risks with her voice. Um, some people may be like really taken um, aback by those choices, but there's something about dance that for me, it's like, it's all valid and it all has purpose. And it's something that can seem really owned in a way that um, I, I appreciate about about what we do. Maybe I'm gonna go back. Down, I'm writing down every musical. Um, <laughs> oh, Kyle is Kyle is the old. music man. Ask him to yeah, send you a playlist. Playlist. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh -huh. I'm gonna go listen. Look for all these people. Kyle. Gingy Rascal. Is that what you said? Oh, Rochelle Farrell. No, Rochelle Farrell. But Gingy Rascal. Oh, oh, Dizzy, Dizzy Rascal. Dizzy. Okay. All right. I have some comments and then I have some questions. Believe it or not, we're almost done. But no. Meredith, I know, I told you all, didn't I tell you? Yeah. <laughs> Meredith Rennie said, not a gang. Zane Booker said, amazing, I love it. Men on film at a church camp. <laughs> <laughs> Monique Martin, OMG, men on film. Love this, hashtag hated it. <laughs> hated it. <laughs> Sadly, that show wouldn't, it wouldn't happen today. <laughs> Zane Booker said, miss those days, met Kyle a long time ago, Thelma Hill, Black Spaces, hello, BB. Cameron McKinney, oh my gosh, I don't even know if we can get to this, but hi, Cameron, said, how do you, this is a hard, how do you go about facilitating that kind of trusting atmosphere in the creative process with people you haven't worked with for very long? 
or while creating a commission with a set period of time. Wow, that's a big one. And I also forgot that, BB, we got to give big up. Aim, uh, oh my gosh, Georgiana Pickett and Anna Glass, 651 Rain, with all of those fabulous women. Yes, yes. Okay, big Wait, question. Anna, you call Anna Glass, 651? <laughs> That's a big question. Uh, but how do you, how to get trust? Yeah. Spe with especially with people you haven't worked with, or while creating a commission with a set period of time. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Y'all don't know about having a short period of time to set a work. No. no, no, no. It's always, it's curious. Like, what do you do first? And maybe you just need to kind of sit around and like, yeah. So where'd you come? Well, you know, how was the trip here? And like, I don't know. You know, you just need to. It just break that that sheen of like we're in performance and we're going to do this thing of just so you know do you have a brother i think I, you look like somebody i know you know just that the people aspect is what you're going to be dealing with and um i also think that there's something in the group that they're not dancing for you the choreographer director everybody is involved the pieces between everybody it's in the middle of the room so how are you paying attention to what it needs as opposed to like trying to please one or the other of some other some other people and um i don't know the short period of time i remember uh, th this was ralph kind of after he i think it was after he he, he finished with the company and was doing something he's just like you know they gave me two weeks i just got as far as i could <laughs> or as far as i did he didn't even say as far as i could i just got as far as i did and that was it and so there's that. There's I'm, that. I, I was never quite that kind of, I, you know, I'm like, well, I'm going to try, you know, well, but there's also, and do you, do you recognize that, that first impulse go, whoa, and it's kind of flowing and you just kind of listen to that. And then you bring everybody in so that they can listen to that flow too. It's not just happening to you, but it's like, how do I, whoa, you see that, you see that move? It, let's all follow that thing that you share the you share the work you share the work so that's something hmm. and and kyle did you want to respond to that but i know you also have something else for bb oh yeah for BB. sure i'll go quick with mine i think i try to um just start any kind of collaborative process with a new company that maybe i'll be working with for a short period of time with a lot of my disclaimers um, I tell them all of the ways that I work and I talk about the movement, you know, ultimately they're the ones doing the movement. So if it doesn't look or feel good, it probably isn't going to look that cute. So, you know, and if it hurts them, you know, it's not really worth it. It's not that deep. So <laughs> I try and set up that conversation uh, and just let them know right off the bat where I'm at. I also say, listen, I'm not dancing. So if, if we need breaks, you know, if, if there's not someone designated to tell us when we're taking the break, just let me know because you know, we're, we're just working here. Let's, let's just try and make whatever it is, it's best. Um, and I think that setting that off right off the, the get-go helps in some way. Um, should I dive into my question? For yeah. Me? Okay. Go for it. So, you know, I'm kind of like obsessed with love for a whole host of reasons. It's that Leo vibe. Hey, hey. Um, but uh, baby, I wanted to talk to you or ask you about love, really. And, and one of the things, I mean, there's so much to talk about, but one of them is really kind of finding love um, separate from finding your voice and finding love while um, building the, the BB empire. Wow. That's a big one. Wow. Wow, okay, wow. <laughs> and, and we only have about a half a minute. Okay, so when we, when we think about, when we think about love, you know, I thought of, I, I think of David, who's somewhere up in up here, and we met when I was 16, and then we re-met when I was like 37 years later. We met in college, and then we met later. And so just like, oh my goodness, you see a picture of me, you see something of me, and I see something of you that is of our history, and that has been a big bind, bound, a, a thing for me. Um, and I and I think about um, the, the people, it, it, I, it's the people that I've worked with is the ones that I love. I love them because they, I, 
I'm, 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 I'm picturing Daryl, Angie, Nikki, Renee, uh, David Thompson, um, Shelly, uh, Amy, of just um, the, the attention to something that they love and that they're working on and the fight inside of them with what it is that they want to do for themselves and how, you know, the privilege of, of kind of, 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 um, of, of traveling some of that way with them, knowing that they're going to leave me <laughs> and knowing that they're going to move on to something else in their lives. So it's like the capture of a, of a particular time of, of resonance between us that I feel is really precious. Um, um, it, it doesn't last forever. It, um, um, it sometimes doesn't last as long as it needs to, but it, it's, it's, it's the gift of, of my feeling what I feel for them is a gift for me. And I, you know, and then how, I don't know, I don't know. Oh my gosh, I, I'm interrupting again. I hate this part. It's 731. What a beautiful, oh, what a beautiful question. Mm. Mm. And Thank, what you, a beautiful the, Thank you for the beautiful answer and for that inspiration. Yeah, yeah I'm, we're yeah. going to bring answers. You know, they're, they're, I'm sorry, Kyle, say that again. I interrupted I'm definitely, you. I'm definitely in love with, with my dancers, my collaborators. Um, I'm so grateful for the heart and the trust um, that they give me um, all the time. <laughs> Come on back in, Kimani. Come on back in, Nick. Wow, didn't I warn you all that it would just be. Cynthia Oliver. Cynthia Oliver. <laughs> Renee Redding. I'm thinking like, oh my God, did I say something? Okay. Anyway. Tamika. Tamika. Oh my God. So many names, right? There's so many. Oh man. Oh, God. <laughs> Heidi. Lucy. Sarah. Ted. Oh, okay. Yeah. I can't. I just it's like, yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, it's time to say goodbye. Oh. <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> it's past, past time to say goodbye. But I just want to make sure that BB, Kyle, if you have one last thing to say to the lovely people that shared the time with us. Sure. You want to go first, <laughs> BB? You go first. <laughs> um, thank you to everyone um, on Black Dance Stories, the team, everyone that's watching. Thank you to um, everyone in our community, people that lift us up and support us and check in on us. Um, thank you to, yeah, all the, the presenters, dancers, choreographers, um, PR, all of the things, Devo teams, all the things that help um, create and push our field and our stories and our hearts that much fuller and that much bigger um, so that they can be shared in those experiences. Um, and thank you, Bibi, for being um, someone that I could look up to um, all the time, all the time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Kyle. Thank you, Charmaine. Thank you, team. I'm looking at you smiling. Some of you, which I don't see your faces anymore, but I know you're there. And uh, thanks for asking for this. Thank you for doing this for all of us, um, that there's a... Um, uh, a gathering of information and heart and stories that is so deep and so uh, uh, we are so grateful for and we all breathe with. And um, thank you all for, for tuning in and listening and keeping and supporting this work that Black Dance Stories is doing. Thank you to my family for uh, being there uh, uh, for me. Thank you for my dance family for um, uh, oh, just being in view and being in my heart. And um, we are so lucky to be doing what it is that we're doing in these times and um, how, we, how we breathe and, and connect is vital. Vote, vote. Vote, vote. vote. <laughs> census, census, census. Yeah, all of it, yes. Take care of each other. Mm. And so next week, next week, it's Nia Love and Maria Bauman Morales. 
we just keep going. Yeah. We just keep going. Well, cheers to everyone again. Thank you all for saying yes and for sharing the love. Cheers. Bye, everybody. See you next week. Bye.